Clearwater, you're on the air, WPLP. Yes, uh, can I tell you about how God answered a prayer for me? Sure. Sure, in October 1925, during, uh, in October 1985, <laughs> excuse me, um, watching Channel 22 uh, during uh -huh. their October telethon, mm -hmm. I called in one evening on the 25th of October 1985 and pledged by faith, mm -hmm. because I didn't have any money, a thousand dollars. Right, I know I've heard the story a dozen times from you, and lo and behold, you thought you won a Corvette from Q105. You didn't win a Corvette from Q105, so they offered you a thousand bucks instead, and you sent the thousand bucks to Channel 22. No, that's totally wrong. Oh. Must be ha have me mixed up with somebody else. But anyway, oh. within a month, the next month, which was uh, November of uh -huh. 85, I won not 900, not 100, but I won $1,000 uh -huh. from WWBA. Uh -huh. Now, you might say, well, that was totally, you know, a coincidence. That's right. I'll tell you another occasion. No, no, no. You, you proved to me how that was God answering prayer. How do I prove that? Yes. Well? How do you prove that? I can only believe by faith. Oh, I see. You can believe, but you can't prove. No. You can like, think. Um, you can hope that it was God answering a prayer, but you can't prove it. Well, I can give you other examples. Sure you can. Uh, but you can't prove any of them. It was, uh, this was an act of faith on my part that didn't have anything to do with prayer, but it was by faith mm -hmm. that this another thing happened to me. Uh, I wrote a letter back in 19... I believe it was 81 to the PTL Club for a Bible. They said, if anyone would like a Bible, please write in, and you can have one free. So I wrote a letter, believe it or not, to, to the PTL Club asking for a free Bible. And then I reread the letter, and I thought it was sort of corny, you know. looks It sounded sort of stupid. So I put the letter away in my drawer, and uh, a few days later, it might have been a week later, I got a call from a friend who used to work with my mother at this uh, dental office. And uh, we got to talking, and I told her that I had written this letter and that I refused to mail it because it sounded so stupid. Well, she <clears throat> had a brand-new PTL Bible, and she said she would be more than happy to mail it to me, and I have that Bible right now. Isn't that miraculous? But I have other things that happened to me. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you ever pray for a cure for cancer? No, it was a miracle. Doesn't surprise me. It was a miracle. Not a healing, but it was a miracle in and of itself. Mm -hmm. um, about 23 years ago, I was driving my... or operating my friend's uh, Fascinating motorcycle. stories. I can hear radios clicking off all over town. Go ahead. Okay. It was about uh, 23 years ago, during the summer, in uh, northern Clearwater. I was driving my friend's motorcycle. Uh, for the first time out on the open road, usually he let me uh, just drive it around my neighborhood. But this time, I'm out on the open road with him on the back. And uh, we were in northern Clearwater, and I was following traffic, uh, and I was supposed to make a sharp left, going about 35 miles an hour. And instead of, instead of making the sharp left, I panicked and went <laughs> straight off the road towards uh, a drainage ditch with a high embankment right behind that and a fenced in barbed wire pasture. Great. Don't paint us a picture. Let's just get to the bottom line. Okay, the bottom line is that uh, we didn't wear helmets in those days. You know, we just had Levi's on. and mm, Perhaps that explains a lot. And um, we hit this ditch doing about 35 miles an hour, maybe 30 miles an hour. And uh, the motorcycle, I blacked out, and the motorcycle was laying straddled straight up and down on the hand wires and the rear seat on the seat. I was running in third gear. Uh, my friend was on one side of the motorcycle and I was on the other. We were both uh, somebody had picked us up and sat us down on our bottom. Uh, neither one of us had a scratch or a bruise. Well, much or... more preferable to be sat down on your bottom than your top, I suppose. Well, somebody sat us down on our bottom. Somebody mm -hmm. took us off the motorcycle and sat us down in this little drainage ditch. Mm -hmm. and of course, you were. Of course, you were unconscious. You have no idea how you no, got that position. No, I was not unconscious at all. Oh, strange! I could have sworn you said you were. I said that I you had well, blacked out. I blacked out. I did right. black out just for. The, well, that's unconscious. Before the accident ever happened, 
know what I'm saying? I'm saying the motorcycle has straddled the ditch, is running in third gear. Um, I looked through the center of the motorcycle. My friend was sitting, looking at me. I was looking at him. And uh, he, excuse me, he had a little nick on his forehead. Other than that, we were perfectly healthy. A man ran over, I remember, in a 53 Chevy. He got out of his car, ran over there, and was asking us, you know, if we were okay. And we just looked at him and said, no, we're okay. Uh, we picked up the motorcycle. The uh, throttle cable was um, busted, and we drove home. Hmm. And, uh, you know, in 1960... What a miracle. In 1968 and 69, I was in Vietnam, and... Uh, Infantry company. I'm afraid I don't have enough time to listen to your tales of woe. Well, it's not a tale of woe. Well, I've already gone six God, minutes with you. Real. I, you know, I've already gone six minutes with you, and your proof of prayer is that somebody sent you a PTL Bible mm -hmm. and that uh, you won $1,000 from a radio station. No, I guess I, I believe God saw my face in that writing that letter for the PTL Bible, and oh. he responded to my face. See, the Bible says... Gee, it's too bad you didn't ask for a cure for cancer, you know what I mean? Well, I might just do that. Yeah, why don't you? But see, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Right. And it just never dawned... How old are you? I'm 38. 38 years old, and it never dawned on you to ask God for a cure for cancer. You just asked God for, you know, things like Bibles. Well, uh, when I first became a Christian, I was told that I should have my own Bible. You know, not to use my parents' Bible or... A friend's Bible, but that I should have my own. Well, that's certainly justification for not asking for a cure for cancer. No, that's why I thought I should write, you know, for the Bible. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold... Well, it just I seems to me it just seems Bible. to me that anybody with this lifetime of proof of how God answers prayer would start praying for things that mattered, that might do the rest of us some good, that might do humanity good. Well, to a Christian, to have a Bible and to read it... Yeah, I know it's more important than a cure for cancer. I understand that. Clearwater, you're on the air at WPLP. Hi, I'd like to say, though, that everything is pro-choice, not pro-choice. You have a choice, and if you choose God, fine. If you choose nothing, fine. If you choose Satan, that's fine, too. Well, then, so does, does God, does God or does not... Does God... Shut up! Does God or does not God... Oh, I see. You couldn't take part in the conversation. What a pity. Couldn't take part in the conversation because you don't have a brain.